Today we're going to cover the WIP or WIP series product training. The agenda is going to be uh, as follows. What is the WIP series? How do WIP products differ from other digital wireless products that we currently offer? We'll go over the key features that make these products unique in the marketplace. Next we'll dive right into the WIP product line so you can see the models we offer. And then we'll go lastly into use cases of how to properly deploy a WIP solution. What is the WIP series? Very basically, the WIP series of products are wireless IP access point or station devices that are used to create uh, a digital wireless IP transmission. Uh, so these are basically transmitters and receivers in the IP world. We call them access points and stations. Access points being your receiver, stations being your transmitters. All of our WIP products are using unlicensed bands. They are FCC Part 15 approved, and we are using 5 gigahertz frequencies for all of the data transmission. Another key feature of the WIP product here is that each product is identical in terms of the web menu that you use to program it. Every unit can be used either as an access point or a station, so you don't have to remember which one is a transmitter, which one is a receiver when placing an order for a customer. So how do these really differ from other digital wireless links? What products are network products? So these use an 802.11 wireless standard, uh, and they are used with IP cameras only. You can use analog cameras on these products, pending you want to use an IP video encoder to turn that analog camera into an IP camera. The second biggest difference is that the multiple cameras can be streamed over a single point-to-point -point link using the WIP product line. Unlike the digital wireless links we use for analog devices, it's still a one-to-one -one ratio, one transmitter and one receiver per camera. So if you had four cameras in an area, you wanted to stream all four wirelessly back to a building, you have four complete sets of products. Uh, we can actually do that by connecting two links together with switches on the other end. And lastly, a single access point receiver can be used to receive multiple WIP station transmitters. If you look at the diagram below, you'll see that there are three transmitters on the building on the left. Those are actually sending all of their signals back to a single transmission access point receiver on that pole on the right. Jumping right into the key features, the biggest key feature of these uh, products are the 802.11n 2x2 MIMO capabilities. So these products do use multiple in, multiple output technology. For those not familiar how that works, two antennas are used to transmit signals and two antennas are used to receive signals from the transmitter and receiver. They do this at the same time, which basically doubles the throughput capacity of these devices. And what that really translates to is higher bandwidth and higher reliability. In a simplex mode, sending the transmission one way, we can send up to 160 megabits or 80 megabits full duplex, which is how we utilize these. So we have an 80 megabit full duplex bandwidth limit. Unlike uh, units in the past, we typically were only able to get 20 to 25 megabits per second on the high side. Now we can basically almost uh, go 4x that on these devices to uh, really increase the number of cameras or at least the resolution and frame rate capabilities of higher megapixel cameras when needing to go wireless. iPole is actually a transmission protocol, point to point, point to multipoint that you set these to. It's proprietary to these devices and what it really does is it enables us to get that maximum 80 megabit per second bandwidth with the lowest possible latency. Why that's important is obviously we're sending video. When you send video, you don't want to know about something happening five seconds after it took place. iPole is going to make sure that we have millisecond response time when it comes to seeing activity on that camera. The other benefit of iPole is the security feature. While this is based on standard 802.11 Wi-Fi principles, iPole mode blocks laptops, phones, anything else that might actually be able to scan an area for a network from being able to connect to these wirelessly. The only way you can actually gain access to these devices when they're in iPole mode is to hardwire into their Ethernet port, and at that point you do have to know username and password to even gain access as well. An installation tool that's added on just for ease of use is an external LED indicator. On the side of every unit there's an LED panel. It has a 4 LED light to show signal reception strength, a LAN light, and a power light. When you're using these as a transmitter, those link lights are going to determine your alignment. So as you put the antenna up, or as you put the uh, device up with an integrated antenna, you're going to aim that to the receiver. The more lights you have on that LED panel, the better the reception you're going to be getting to the receiver. On the receiver side, you can basically see the average reception level, the lowest reception level, and you can also use it to determine the number of clients or stations that are connected to that uh, access point for receiving it. You can set different thresholds based upon what levels you want the reception to be kind of notified on. Um, the basic standard settings out of the box work really well. The next key feature is an automatic transmit power control feature. We uh, label it ATPC in the programming menu. This is a great tool that uh, everyone should take advantage of. We actually put it in the quick start guide and if they are paying for pre-programmed services we click this during that process. And what it really does is each radio and the transmitter and receiver are going to constantly communicate and they're going to determine how much output 
they actually need to put to each other to make sure they're maintaining a solid link to one another. Next, we have security encryption. Every Wi-Fi device, whether it's an access point or a home router, is going to have some sort of an encryption option to make sure that you have a SSID name to name the network, and there's a password to be able to gain access to that network. The different types of encryptions, there's an open encryption where nothing is applied. It's very unsecure, usually not used. We do offer WEP, 64-bit and 128-bit encryption. The thing to note is we do recommend using these devices in iPole to make sure we get the maximum bandwidth and the lowest latency possible. AES 128-bit encryption does not work in iPole mode. You can only go up to 64-bit. Government typically wants 128-bit. It's not a big deal. We can set this in a standard access point transmission mode. We just don't gain the benefits of iPole of ensuring that we're going to get the full bandwidth capability and uh, the lowest latency possible. Still going to work well, just it's a trade-off that you have to go through. There's a personal using WPA, WPA2, and then there's an enterprise where you can actually link this to a radius server if you're using that on an enterprise network to do your authentication. Now that you know the key features, let's jump right into the WIP product line. The first model in the line is the WIP5800N. This carries an MSRP of $114.99. This is for indoor use. It has two external five decibel omnidirectional antennas included. It does use RPSMA connections, so if you did want to put higher gain antennas on this, you're more than welcome to. Uses an industrial metal chassis, so this is a ruggedized housing. And it is very compact. You can see by the dimensions here, it's going to fit very well into a drop ceiling, attached to a wall, attached to a ceiling. Uh, this does run on 12 to 48 volt passive PoE, and the PoE injector is included. Next model in the lineup is the WIP5800N-WR. It's basically the WIP5800N just in an outdoor enclosure. It does carry the MSRP of $114.99. This is an IP65 outdoor rated housing. The thing to note though, they are two external N antenna connectors. As you can see by the image here, the two uh, screw fittings on the top of the device. However, the antennas are not included. Wall and pole mount brackets are included with this, and it is still very compact in size. This unit as well, like all the other ones, are going to operate on 12 to 48 volt passive PoE. The PoE injector is included. Next in the line is the WIP5818N-WR. The MSRP in this is $134.99. It's IP66 outdoor rated. And the biggest difference on this is it comes with an integrated 18 decibel dual polarized panel antenna. So that entire unit does have the antenna built into the housing, so no additional antennas are needed. $134.99 is your total cost. It's wall and pull mountable and uh, the bracket is included as you can see on the picture on the bottom on the right. Dimensions, it's 8 by 8 by 1.7. That does not include the, the um, wall bracket, pole mount bracket shown on the bottom right in terms of the depth. And again, this operates on 12 to 48 volt passive PoE. The injector is included. If you look at the product distance recommendations on the bottom, using a uh, point to point mode where you have multiple transmitters going to a single receiver, these have been tested up to 4.35 miles for reception. And point to point mode, just one to one, with uh, one camera or one device going at very little bandwidth, it is possible to do almost 12 and a half miles. And in a point to point where you have a one to one link, but you're trying to run an entire 80 megabit full duplex, it's about a mile and a quarter in terms of the total distance. Lastly, we have the WIP 5890NWR. This carries an MSRP of $199.99. This is an IP65 outdoor rated housing. And this is your point to multi point receiver. So when you're trying to do a point to multi point, you're going to have a wide angle of reception. This is going to be your best bet. It has an integrated 20 decibel dual polarized 90 degree sector antenna, so it has a very wide reception range to make it very easy to get multiple devices back to this one receiver. Wall and pull mount brackets are included for your dimensions, so you can see the size. Even though it is a uh, larger unit from the picture, it's only 15 inches tall, 5 and a half inches wide, and about an inch and a half depth. Uh, of course, the bracket adds a little bit of depth to that. And like all the other units, it does run on 12 to 48 volt passive PoE and the injector is included. The one thing to note on all the outdoor units is that the PoE injector is not an outdoor PoE injector. So if this is going to be in a remote area where you're going to have a unit on a pole, you have no way to get that PoE injector inside a pole or inside a building. Well, we do need to talk to them about weatherizing that power supply just to make sure that uh, everything's going to be uh, in the proper housing. Now let's go over the WIP deployment so we know how to properly deploy these in the field. So on the indoor units, there's a couple of ways to do this. There's an indoor point-to-point -point or an indoor point-to-multipoint. The WIP 5800N units are the ones that are ideal for this. And what you're really going to use this is an environment where you're in a building, cabling may already be in place, or it's just going to be extremely hard for you to try to run additional cable. You don't have a network port where you want to put your camera, but you need to get this back. So if you look at the layout below, 
This is a very simple system, five cameras. You've got three cameras on the left in the primary part of the building. You've got the server closet, and then you have basically like a sales floor over on the right. Very simple, very easy. If you have cable in place, or you can run cable to all those cameras, not a big deal. But if you look at the cameras on the right, but you have the two on the sales floor, what if those cameras want to be moved around that sales floor to check on uh, sales performance or just interview performance, whatever it may be? You would basically grab the 5,800 in units, put a primary access point over on the other wall. You can easily wire that down into the server closet, just one wall to go through. And then those two cameras are now wirelessly transmitting back to that single access point, just like Wi-Fi on your laptop. Those cameras can be moved around as long as there's local power or they can stay in place. It's just a really easy way to add cameras on the fly or be able to have some flexibility in terms of mounting locations in the future. In an outdoor environment, you've got point-to-point -point transmissions, very similar to the indoor. This just happens to be in an outdoor unit. This is a very common sale where you've got sales optimization here on the left, a building. You've got their parking lot. They want to put a camera out on the pole looking at the parking lot. Very difficult to trench under asphalt and concrete when you've already got it poured. So all you do is pop up two of the 5818s, one in the building as a, trans as a receiver, one at the pole as a transmitter. Now you've got that camera wirelessly going back to that building to hit your NVR. Point to multipoint, you can actually use the same scenario and add another device. So as long as, uh, say, they have another pole out there, they want to add another camera. Pop another 5818 out there with a the camera, hit that same 5818 receiver, and now you basically have two units transmitting the one receiver. So your additional equipment cost to add in the future is very low because you're really only buying a radio at the camera side, not at the uh, receiving side. The only reason this would not work is if these poles were extremely far apart and you're having to shoot kind of from uh, the extreme left and extreme right. That's when you would move into the 5890 WR as your primary receiver. This can cover a 90 degree area, so you've got a much wider reception range, uh, and you can add two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, different transmitters to that one receiver unit, as long as you're going to be in that throwing area. The other thing to note when using uh, the 5818 and the 5890s, uh, which is really different from an analog world as well, is while we say camera and transmitter going together, it's basically camera or camera and switches going together to the 5818. So if you notice in this scenario, rather than cameras being shown, I have buildings. So let's say that each of these buildings has four cameras plugged into a switch. We would plug the 5818 into the switch. Now all four of those cameras are now wirelessly transmitting from the building back to that radio tower to get to the NVR at that primary location. So we can actually send entire network segments over in an independent link. The thing to be aware of on bandwidth when you do point to multipoint is the bandwidth is shared. So when I say on high side we get 80 megabits per second in a wonderful ideal world that's 80 megabits shared on this entire wireless link another point to multi-point transmission uh, system that comes up when you've got multiple cameras in an environment where they're going to be streaming from completely different directions where you've got cameras like this building in the middle you have traffic lights kind of all around this building there's no way that one receiver is going to be able to pick this up if you're using directional antennas so you can use the 5818s to send your uh, focused beam back to the building and then put your radio tower up and use the 5800 using omni antennas as your primary access point. Omnidirectional antennas are going to give you a 360 degree range of reception. So it makes it very easy to use one receiver, keep your equipment cost and totals down uh, without having to, to worry about which direction am I facing. However, omnidirectional antennas are very height sensitive. So if you're going to have a lot of change in elevation from the sending to the receiving point, it's probably not going to be the best solution and even though it may cost a little bit more and you're going to have multiple receivers, I'd recommend using a couple of different uh, 5890s as uh, receiving stations on that primary building. That way you can make sure that you've got dedicated links. Height isn't going to be an issue in terms of going from really high to really low. And uh, you can also basically now increase additional cameras if you were to add because you're going to have more bandwidth to play with in the future. Lastly, we'll talk about outdoor repeating transmissions. Currently, we don't have an actual repeater mode in these units. However, there's a way around doing a traditional repeater mode using the WIP series. If you notice here, we have a primary building on the bottom. We have two traffic lights out here around this building. We have one camera on the far left that needs to get back to the primary building, and it can't go through this little shopping center that's blocking it. Easiest way to do this is put your 5818 transmitter out on that light on the top left. Put your WIP 5800 in with an Omni antenna in the middle and then put another 5818 on the primary building. If you notice from the wording on the diagram though, the access point is actually in the middle out there where the Omni antennas are. It's a little bizarre to put your access point kind of out in the middle as we call that technically your receiver. However, when you hardwire out of the transmitters or receivers, you can carry all of the data across this entire link. It doesn't matter if you're wiring into the AP 
or if you're wiring into the station. So even though we have technically a transmitter out of the bottom building, we can hardwire out of that transmitter and get the camera up on the far left the same way we would if the access point was on that building. The only thing to note on this is that if you wanted to make changes to this network in terms of security features, channels, anything like that, it does have to be done from the access point. So you do have to go out physically to that location to make those changes. Additionally, we can create back-to-back -back radio transmissions if one or more of our repeater stations is needed. So say you had two lights sitting out there on the top left and you needed to get around it. Well, since we can only do one hop technically using these uh, the way I first described, you would basically put radios back to back. So you would shoot a 5818 to another 5818 at the second light, then you would uh, wire that together to another 5818 and shoot that down to another 5818 and just kind of create a string of transmitter receiver, transmitter receiver, transmitter receiver. It may introduce a little bit of latency with uh, the number of uh, kind of wired hops that you're going between it, but uh, it's going to be very minimal and it's going to make sure that you've got proper uh, reception range and proper bandwidth to get everything you need back to that primary building.